The time has come, Foonies, to round out this bracket in the place where all the action happens. The Swamp, Washington, D.C., and other executive houses around the nation, because that is where you'll find our national buffoons. Time to talk about some national buffoonery. Our number one seed, Jerry Nadler, started the year convening a kangaroo court over the fake Russia impeachment. He then embarrassed himself by demanding that no one drink coffee in committee without a mask on. Not to mention his off-the-cuff comments calling Antifa a myth. And then there was that one time that we all thought he pooped himself. While Nadler will be tough to beat, we think that our number four seed, Senator Macy Hirono, is up to the task. Hirono continued to act like a petulant child in the Senate. During a committee hearing on rioting across the nation, Hirono stormed out in a huff when Senator Cruz asked if she would denounce Antifa. She wouldn't, of course. And then, her fumbling and bumbling and stumbling questions during Justice Amy Coney Barrett's confirmation hearing more than qualifies her for this dubious distinction. It's a battle of buffoonery in our national legislative branch. Your vote decides who goes on to the next round in the Buffoon of the Year tournament. So who you got, America? And it's time to round out the final bracket here in Buffoon of the Year. It's the National Buffoons. And helping me to do it is probably the number one friend of our show, Timothy Shea, the co-founder of MAGA Institute. Timothy, thanks again for doing this and coming on the show. We're going to have a lot of fun with this bracket. In my opinion, this bracket has the overall number one seed. And that's saying a lot with this group, Jerry Nadler. It is, and, and I've got to thank you for, for assigning me this bracket because the other brackets are great, but this one's really a lot of fun. Oh, this, this is, is absolutely a lot of fun. Now, now, full disclosure, when we're going to talk about Jerry Nadler in a second, but we try to give a little bit of parity throughout government. We have a representative from the Congress, from the Senate, from uh, governors across this, the, the great, this great country of ours, and the Trump administration as well. But we're focusing now, Congress versus Senate, Nadler versus Hirono. Let's start talking about these buffoons. Like I said, Nadler to me is the number one buffoon. His body of work throughout the entire year is really astounding. It you surely start, is. And, you, and when, you, go when, you've got, when you've got Humpty Lumpty, no Nadler, going against <laughs> Crazy Maisie, oh no Hirono. I mean, that right there is your marquee matchup. Oh, it, the nicknames are going to be flowing like wine. I can feel it already. Because the buffoonery level, as I've said to you many, many times, it entails a level of ridiculousness, okay? Ridicule is our most potent weapon, as I tell people all the time. And, and, and most of the people that didn't make the cut into the final 16, they were just evil. Or they did things that were really, really bad. Or even really, really stupid. But, but they didn't get you giggling. And these people, you know, oh no, Hirono, every time she gets a turn at the mic of the Senate Judiciary Committee, you're almost rooting for her to not make a fool of herself. But she and, just can't bring herself. And they never fail. They never fail to perform for us. Right. Nadler, for instance, from the impeachment hearings to the impeachment Antifa, trial. Antifa the myth? Are you kidding me? Yeah, so, so Nadler, starting in January with the impeachment trials, the impeachment hearings, yeah, the kangaroo court he, he had, Yep. Fast forward into the spring and summer. Oh, with could you, could you excuse me just sure. a minute? I'm, I'm a do? little. Oh, I'm a, I'm a little. Oh, yeah, you know, I was. I, I got to have something. some. I got to have some cafe Nadler. Oh my God! You remember that when in the hearing you're not allowed to drink coffee because you have to keep your mask on at all times? Yeah, I know. Absolutely ridiculous. I, uh, but but the coup de gras. The the biggest thing that I remember seeing is uh, you call them no nads, no nads poopy pants. Where, where we think we're not, we can't confirm it. Pretty, pretty, but, pretty sure he shattered. Pretty but sure he shattered. Anonymous sources say that Jerry Nadler may have pooped himself on stage. Yeah. And if, if you watch the video that's on BuffoonTheWeek.com, you might agree with us. But I uh, mean, calling Antifa a myth? My God, the body of work here over a course of 12 months, it, I'll rival it with anyone. I'll, I'll put it up against. I will measuring stick to Reverend Al Sharpton any day. I'll put it up oh. against 
I'll put it up against Anthony Weiner any day. It was that big of a year. And he is consistently, consistently in the high Giga Sharpton level. He's even approaching the Terra Sharpton level. See, this is how you know that you got a real supporter of the show. When we're talking about Giga Sharptons, fantastic. The Sharpton scale of buffoonery, one of the greatest mechanisms invented by our friend Matt Fairley. I, I thank you so much for doing that. That was so cool. But let's not sell Macy Hirono short, okay? Oh the no, Hirono. When she yes. asked Amy Coney Barrett if she's ever, if she'd ever sexually harassed anyone, I mean, Amy, the look on Amy's face, in in. Look, there's a reason why I'm not in these kind of positions that these people are being vetted oh, yeah. by the Senate yeah. for. Because I would, like the Admiral, during the during the impeachment hearings, the Admiral that they had in, how they can keep a straight face is beyond me. I couldn't keep a straight face, and I certainly couldn't keep my snark in check. Oh, no, the Brooklyn in me would come out a little bit. Oh, absolutely. I'm sorry, what did you ask me? You know, it, all of a sudden, it would be, not be Gene in the room, it would be Joe Pesci in the room. You know, exactly. it would be something like that. But she really is a petulant child. Um, oh, Macy absolutely. I, I think back to the uh, the subcommittee hearing that he had that she had with Ted Cruz talking about uh, Antifa and 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 rioting that happened. I think it was late summer, mm-hmm. and she actually not only did she get smacked down by Ted Cruz as per usual, but she then left the room before the hearing was over and all Ted Cruz was asking to do was just denounce Antifa. Right. And she couldn't do it because they can't do it. Because look, as I've said many, many times in my show, the Democrat, the Democratic Party died on the streets of Chicago outside the 1968 DNC. The radicals, Bill Ayers, Bernadine Dorn, Saul Alinsky, their whole crew, the radicals that were protesting the Democrat National Convention in Chicago were on the floor as delegates in 72, which is why the biggest Marxist ever to be nominated for president until a Kenyan came along, uh, South Dakota Senator McGovern, uh, that's how he got elected because all the radicals from Chicago became delegates and, and that's when the Democratic Party died. Now, they play the long game. It's taken 50 years for the commies to reveal themselves, but they have, and Ono Hirono is carrying water like it's her job. Oh, well, it clearly is, because at least on that Senate Judiciary Committee, uh, Frankenfeinstein is a corpse. You mean Dice Dice Spy? Oh, see, the nicknames are flowing right now, I'm telling you. Did you see the picture I took when I was down in Philly? Oh, no, you know what? There's a Temple University University building, the Feinstein building, and it's got the Chinese characters underneath. It's like you literally can't make it up. And we're going to put that up on the screen right now. There it is. Yeah, I'm, I, I definitely want to check that out. Uh, but my God, it, it, she's the next generation of leadership, air quotes, in the Senate. And if that's the case, we're all doomed. But we've come to the time now, Tim, where we have to handicap, where we have to put our money where our mouth is, and we have to tell the people who's going to win this particular matchup. Who you got? I, I, I've, I've got to go with no Nasler. I mean, Hirono's buffoonery arises out of her stupidity. Jerry Nadler's arises out of his complete lack of integrity. And that's way more buffoonish as far as I'm concerned. And he's also an Oompa Loompa. So that, well, that kind of adds to it. You know, I am so bad. This is this is now I don't need, the umpteenth time I've made fun of an appearance. Bad gene. But, no, but, but seriously, Jerry Nadler is... Just he's right for political humor. Mm-hmm. He says dumb, dumb things. He does dumb things. He's the total package. And maybe the best moment that typifies Jerry Nadler to me, there was a scene during the presidential impeachment trial in the Senate where Shifty Adam Schiff wanted to get up and say something and answer a question, but Nadler beat him to it. Somehow Jerry Nadler was quicker than someone. And it was, he was it was hysterical. And all you see is uh, Adam Schiff going, Jerry, Jerry. And he just goes up and he he does his He didn't care. So for that lack of self-awareness, Jerry Nadler. Oh, it wasn't even a lack of self-awareness. He just didn't care. He basically gave Schiff the Heisman. It was awesome. (laughs) Oh, that is fantastic. Well, listen, 
we now have to show the competition for the winner of this matchup. And let's reveal right now the number two seed and the number three seed in the National Buffoon bracket. Moving on with our National Buffoons, the number three seed is a little bit testy. Well, I don't really care what you think. That's Governor Andrew Cuomo of the People's Republic of New York. Cuomo's arrogance constantly got the better of him this year. Like when he talked about dating on The Tonight Show during the height of the pandemic. Or taking the time to draw a political poster depicting his leadership during the pandemic, which many believe led to the deaths of thousands of New Yorkers in nursing homes. Pride really does go with before the buffoonery. But to move on in the tournament, he'll have to get past our number two seed, Ambassador John Bolton. Bolton flirted with testifying against President Trump during the impeachment proceedings, but it turned out to be a tease for his new book. Trump then fired Bolton and sued him for leaking national security secrets in that book, which ultimately led to an ongoing criminal investigation. So, Foonies, you have a choice between two executive-level buffoons, with one moving on to possibly becoming Buffoon of the Year. Who that is, is all up to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the potential for something we've never seen here on Buffoon of the Year. A brother versus brother final. Andrew Cuomo makes the cut for the governors up against Ambassador John Bolton. And, and there's going to be a lot of controversy with this pick, Timothy. But first of all, could you imagine the possibility of Fredo versus... I mean, is, is he Michael? Is he Sonny? Is he a combination? Andrew Cuomo? It's going to be tremendous if that happens. Well, you and I disagreed over this one pick for the Trump administration, and I think I just figured out why. And we'll get to that in a second, but you think I'm trying to stuff the ballot box? I think, right? I think, I think you got your thumb on the scale there. No, 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 no. I, right here. No. Uh, honestly, let, all right, let's start with Bolton. The reason why I picked Bolton is because this is an example of one stupid move mushrooming out much bigger than itself. A single act became an entire body of work. It, it really did, literally, an entire body of work that became published. Yeah. And you really shouldn't have been. Uh, John Bolton is here because of his uh, book about his time in the Trump administration, and because that book may have, probably did, leak some national security secrets, and led to a Department of Justice inve criminal investigation into the leaking of those secrets. And if you, the real reason I, I nominated him, Timothy, is this. Do you remember during the impeachment hearing when they were begging for John Bolton to tell everybody what they know? Democrats were, were salivating over this, mm -hmm. frothing at the mouth. We've got that drunk now! Oh, the, the other shoe was ready to fall for the umpteenth time. Mm -hmm. But what did Bolton say? You'll have to read about it in my book. Total buffoon move. Absolute buffoon move. Total He's buffoon eating. move, but an absolutely beautiful response to the Democrats. In one, it's one of my favorite lines from 1776. He was willing for the shilling. Absolutely. And that's why, that's why I, I think that he's the better pick here. Now, I'm going to give equal time. You and I had a discussion off air. You thought that Dr. Fauci should have been picked. I'm going to let you make your case for that. Okay, not only have we had multiple flip-flops and him contradicting himself and him contradicting the CDC over the masquerade, uh, social distancing, uh, everything else. The, what put it over the top for me was the first pitch at the Nationals game. And then he goes into the stands and he's sitting there right next to his pals with no mask on after telling people, if you don't wear a mask, you that means you want people to die. Uh, that, that to me was the ultimate buffoon move of the year. Uh, which is why I would have put him in this, but it's Bolton, and I agree. I mean, John, John's been a big chicken hawk. The reason he had his panties in a wad was because uh, President Trump is actually creating peace throughout the world, not wars like John and his, and his cronies wanted. And it, that's, that's a borderline treason move. If you, if you prefer your country to be going to war as opposed to staying in, in the peace, uh, that's beyond buffoonery. That's that's really bad. So I understand the Bolton pick. Uh, the book was bad. Uh, I did love his uh, I did love his uh, response to the Democrats, though. But come on, 
and th there's no competition here. The Reichskanzler <laughs> wins it going away. And why do I call him Reichskanzler Cuomo? Because that was Hitler's title before he became Fuhrer. And we all know that Andy wants to be the Fuhrer. He wants that White House badly. And uh, his brother's going to do everything he can to get him there. Uh, but, you know, I, I dubbed him Governor Jerry after genocide. And, of course, we had nipple ring gate. So uh, I, I think clearly out of all the hideous governors, oh, you know, Governor well, Whitless, well, the Stepford governor in, in of Michigan. Of people to stare at their nipples, why Andrew Cuomo? You got me. Oh, my uh, goodness. I, I think maybe that's why that, that girl that did the cooking show left him. Uh, yeah. he, he was just too freaky for her, I think. Well, all I remember from, from that whole situation, he went on, I think it was Jimmy Fallon's Tonight Show. And instead of talking about the pandemic and talking about, you know, serious things, they're talking about his love life. He goes on his brother's talk show where it, it's the Cuomo's brother comedy hour. And the talk showing, you know, the oversized swabs, everything, everything. We, sh we showed that actually when we nominated uh, Chris Cuomo as a as a member of the bracket here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's that side of it. There's the hubris of Andrew Cuomo with his, you know, political poster of the COVID hill that he drew himself. When did he have the time during this pandemic to draw a poster? Right. He wrote a book about leadership. The man hasn't led a damn thing. Hey, Gene. This is who, all buffoonery. Gene, who are you and I to criticize? Do either of us have an Emmy? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I may not have an Emmy. But, you know, I did win podcast of the year one year. That was pretty cool. That's yes, that actually. No, 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 no. Please hold your applause. Round hold of your applause. applause. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. But I mean, but think about who he beat out, though. He has achieved this year because he beat out Governor Whitless, the Stepford governor of Michigan, who kept the entire state on lockdown, which, by the way, is a prison term, except for the part that had her summer home in it, where her yes. husband wanted to go to put his boat in the water. That part of Michigan was open. Everything he else. Was he also beat out uh, Gavin Newsom in California. And Governor Brown in, o in Oregon. And Governor Inslee in Washington, in Washington, who didn't even know that Chaz was taking over a couple of city blocks, had to be told by the press during a COVID press conference. So but curiously, were... it was a peaceful protest until it was down in the mostly, of his mostly con... peaceful. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Mostly peaceful protest, except when it was down in his front door outside his condo. Then all of a sudden it became a problem. How come? It's a trend. We talk about that with Lori Lightfoot as well. Indeed. It's, 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 am it's amazing you see the same patterns over and over again. But the reason why Cuomo is over the top has to be the abysmal handling of COVID-19. We mentioned about the nursing home deaths. And obviously, we're, we're trying to lighten things up here. But obviously, deaths is not something to be taken lightly here. But uh, his but let's face his it, management the and his died. hubris. Yeah, but the same people that died of, of well, we would have had far fewer deaths if he hadn't put sick people into nursing homes. Okay, that's him, that's why I got, dubbed him Governor Jerry after genocide because in my eyes that's murder. If you you know you're supposed to quarantine sick people, you're not supposed to quarantine sick people with healthy people in the most vulnerable population. Absolutely, because this disease only killed people that were susceptible to dying from an upper respiratory virus, and and he basically put the contagion in with the most vulnerable population and i think that that is unconscionable and it's one of the most craven things ever because he did it for money absolutely but ultimately his attitude in in leadership air quotes again in, in leadership is what got him here the the image the i have fit. of the hissy fit that he had with the press is one image definitely that happened recently about i don't care what people think and dealing with You're school confused. clothes yeah you're the one that's confused not me you he had his Sonny Colleone moment there. Yeah. But to me, it was his dealing with bars and restaurants in the in the late spring, early summer. Mm -hmm. When he came up with this ridiculous rule about having uh, food served with uh, drinks. That's and then And then the American spirit took over and bought him and said, Okay, you want us to serve food? Here are six french fries for a dollar. Here's your food. Yep. And, and then he said, No, it's got to be substantial food. It, it was it was a tit for tat where it was more about the power and people control than it was about disease control. And look, and this that's is a global order. phenomenon because guess guess who is having the substantial food requirement now? Pubs in England. 
okay? This is truly a globalist takeover. This great reset is a globalist thing. Build back better is the slogan. It's being used in Germany, it's being used in the UK, it's being used in France, it's being used all over. And then Joe Biden started using it. This is not, you know, we are beyond American politics. This Democrat party are truly looking for one world government and all they want is their boot on our necks forever. And that's why Buffoon of the Year exists, because this is our little way to give the establishment a little kick in the rear. A little so, a, a little bit, a little, a little <laughs> bit of the, uh, the Italian I can't say here. All right, so now I have to ask again, Cuomo versus Bolton. This one seems like a more easy one, but who do you got? Oh, it's going to be the, the Reichskanzler versus Humpty Lumpty. It's going to be an all-New York semifinal. All right, so now the ultimate question that I ask everyone so far... In the finals of your bracket here, the National Buffoons, you have Nadler versus Andrew Cuomo. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's, it's really a, a hard choice to make for me. It's a pick 'em, but you gotta pick one. So who you got? Well, Gene, I hate to, I'd hate to derail your uh, Cuomo Cuomo, the, the uh, brothers Cuomo final. Hey, it's but not I, me. I, it's I, not I gotta, me. No, I said, but it's your fight. So it's the dream matchup. Right? The dream it, matchup. It's, it's I, one I, of many I dream go matchups. With, I got to go with No Nadler. He's a bigger buffoon. He makes me laugh a lot more than the Reichskanzler does. The Reichskanzler, I see him and I want to punch him in the face. Nadler, I see him. If I saw Nadler on the street, I'd just laugh at him. Okay. There you go. This may be the easiest bracket, but I think it's the easiest bracket because Jerry Nadler is such a force of nature of buffoonery. He's almost like a perfect storm of buffoonery. He's got the physical buffoonery, he's got the mental buffoonery, and he's got the uh, verbal buffoonery. And, and the political affiliation as well. I mean, that, that well, adds to it. But yeah, but you know what? Honestly, is- though, honestly, I, mean, I think you, you and I are both pretty objective. We call out Republicans when they need to be called out. I, w- I would still think Jerry was just as much a buffoon if he were a Republican. Oh, absolutely. I, 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 I totally agree with that. Listen, being from the People's Republic of New York City and a Republican at that, I've had my run my run-ins with Jerry Nadler. Mm-hmm. They were all precious. Let's just say that. Yeah. It wasn't like you. They were memorable. Yeah, memorable it, in the sense that you can't take the man seriously. Right. That's I mean, what I mean. He's he's the ultimate buffoon as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. Well, listen, Timothy Shea, co-founder of Mag Institute. Now is the time we want you. Thank you so much for doing all this, but we want you to tell everybody about Mag Institute and all the organizations that you're affiliated with and how people can get in touch with you and learn more about what you do. Well, thank you, Gene, for having me on. It's been a great pleasure. Oh, this, 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 the pleasure's all mine because, listen, full disclosure to everybody, folks, Timothy Shea was the first person to step up and say, hey, you got a great new show. What can I do to help? The first one to step up. And I will be forever grateful for that. And that's why I feel like everyone should go and find out what MAGA Institute is all about. And Tim, Timothy here is going to tell you why. Well, thanks. In, in full disclosure, Gene and I have been pals for five years now or so, and he's been tremendously helpful in our endeavors. Uh, I started MAGA Institute with Brooke McGowan because we're electing too many Republicans that won't stand up for Republican values, won't stand up for America First values. So what we're doing is vetting candidates. It's a, it's a combination of Newt Gingrich's contract with America with the old Grover Norquist certification on the tax pledge. We're, we're giving candidates a questionnaire, America First questionnaire, that they return together with a signed pledge that if elected, they will govern according to America First principles. And then if, if everything's satisfactory, we give them our certification badge and we also promote their candidacies. Uh, but we're going beyond that, okay? The point is to give people education so that when they walk into the ballot booth on the polling booth on primary day, they know which Republican out of the 17 Republicans, and there might be more than one, is going to govern according to their values, according to America First principles, so that we don't get any more Ben Sasses or Mitt Romney's or Paul Ryan's. But we do, we go beyond that, okay? What we're going to do is assign someone to monitor that representative or that senator, and eventually we're going to work it down to the governors and to the state houses. We've already identified a, a replacement for one prominent Republican governor in the 2022 primary. Uh, we're going to hold their feet to the fire. If you're a MAGA certified candidate and you don't govern according to America First Principles, we'll pull your certification and we'll make a big press announcement about that as well. 
so that's what we're doing. You know, President Trump is like an icebreaker, and if you know how an icebreaker works, it plows through the ice, but you have to follow it with a flotilla of ships to keep that sea lane open, or else the ice will just reform in its stern. We can't have it be like President Trump was never president. Okay, we got to drain this swamp, and we've got to fill the House and the Senate with America First candidates that value the Constitution, that put country ahead of party, and and do the right thing in all circumstances. Absolutely. You Folks, can get us. Uh, let's see, MAGA Institute at MAGA Institute on Parlor at MAGA underscore Institute on Twitter. And the best place is to sign up. Uh, give us your email so we can send you newsletters through www.magainstitute.com. And I'll also put a plug in for Facebook and for YouTube as well. There is a YouTube channel for MAGA Institute. Tons of videos there. A lot of great educational videos from Timothy about a myriad of different topics. I enjoy watching them. They're good long views that I, I use. I actually use them as podcasts on my car ride into work. Great. I, I have a long work. I have a long uh, long drive in, and I, I enjoy I enjoy them immensely. Timothy Shea not only can have fun with the best of them, he's one of the best wonks out there that you never heard of. So definitely check out MAGA Institute. Look at your screen. All the information is right there for you. Timothy Shea, thanks so much for doing this, man. I really appreciate it. And thanks, I, Gene. Had a lot and of I, fun. And again, all the support for the Buffoon of the Year and for the whole the whole channel and everything we've been doing. I can't thank you enough, man. Oh, likewise. Thanks, Gene. All right, folks. We're going to wrap it up and put a bow on this show and put it all in your hands right after this. <laughs>